Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Town of Sandwich and welcome to uh, Town of Sandwich Town Hall. Uh, this town hall was just recently renovated a few years ago with community preservation funds, including this room here, which was the town meeting room. It was also um, a silent movie theater, of all things. Even if you look at the ceiling, you'll see the details of the um, details on the ceiling. Everything was done per the, um, I believe it was 1836 original town hall. And I want to bring attention to the fact that we use community preservation funds for the town hall. In my presentation, uh, we did use community preservation funds for both our dams and our fish runs. So I'm going to wrap that in so sort of think about funding in the future. So before I get started, um, I just recently took over as the director of natural resources for the town of Sandwich from Mark Gelkowski, who was the director for over 30 years. He just retired this summer. Um, the town of Sandwich owes Mark a huge debt of gratitude for all the work he's done. Everything I'm about to show you in these slides, he was he oversaw as the director. And even way, way, way back when, when he was just the conservation agent, it was just him. Uh, he did a lot of the work himself. Everything I'm about to show you is to uh, his credit. I'd like to take credit for it. I was part of it, um, but it was all because of his hard work. Unfortunately, I don't see him here today, um, but if it was, I'd actually make him stand up. And uh, um, re really, the town of Sandwich owes him a whole debt of gratitude. So I'd like to get started. We're actually going to talk about two fish runs. Uh, the Lower Sham Dam that even if you were to peek out the windows here to the town hall, you'd see the, the little fountain area here. We have our first lower run, which is your typical concrete wear run, and the earthen dam behind it. This is Lower Sham Pond. Up above, if you look, oh, I have the map up. So you'll see it's actually marked as Mill Pond. We now know it as Lower Sham Pond, Upper Sham Pond, up there at the top. There is a dam that goes, an earthen dam that goes across there as well. So, I'm gonna get this to work. Can I do an arrow over here? I'm so used to my Mac at this point, sorry. So, the mill operation for both the Lower Sham Dam and the Upper Sham Dam have been an integral part of commerce for the town of Sandwich since the early uh, 19th century. Um, there are varying products that the mills produced. This is a picture of the 1960s, the extra grist mill being restored that grinds corn. The upper dam had mills that produced products such as tack, brass tacks, springs, and curiously enough, um, epaulets for the Union soldiers during the Civil War. In fact, the roadway that you're going to walk up probably today is known as Union Braiding Road. I'm just going to fast forward through some of these here. So you can see, so there's the new wheel that they installed back in the 60s. Okay, here's a picture of the new dam. The um, gate that's now installed, we used to just have big pending boards, the big wooden boards that you're used to. Um, this is now a new fancy crank um, gate that I can actually control by just a hand crank. And here is the dam that's, um, the fish run that's right out here that was constructed. Now this, very interestingly on this particular run, this was supposed to be a two-year project, two falls. The mild winter that we had last year lent itself so that the contractor continued to work through the winter. In fact, he did it section by section throughout last winter by creating a tent and heating the concrete and letting it cure. It was very interesting. We had our doubts in the beginning, but it seemed to come out fairly well. Here's another look down, looking down. In the, in the left of this photograph, you'll see an observation platform. Um, prior to having the observation platform, we had a fence that was pushed out. People could not see over the run. This is my little piece of the design. Um, I remember looking as a kid over in, at the Bourne Run and being able to see the fish all the time, and I know how interested people are seeing fish. 
um, that this now you can now actually look up over and see the fish. This is also the platform where our volunteer uh, shellfish, uh, shellfish, volunteer herring counters stand and count the fish. There's another angle of it with the stonework. Okay, so the upper Sham Dam. Here's the old wooden um, outfall. So interestingly enough about this, here's what it looked like in the 70s. This is what I remember as a kid walking actually across this. Yes, believe it or not. The property was owned by a private family and we knew that, here's another good picture of it, we knew that it was always in danger of failing. In fact, we had been communicating with uh, Massachusetts Dam Safety about doing something about this. And we found out right away that you cannot ac access state dam safety funds by a private party. It has to be owned by the municipality. So it took negotiations over several years to actually purchase this property from the Cook family. If you look over to the left of the screen, you'll see a row of trees. That's the actual dam. This dam was put in 200 years ago with a spine of cedar posts which we actually salvaged during the process and we have made into boards and we're gonna incorporate it into the uh, bridge that you see a little bit later on. So what happened here is the trees grew through the earthen dam and through capillary action of the root system, it started poking holes through. We knew that it was going to really break through at any moment. So it took a long years of negotiation. Mark Gaukowski really worked very hard on this. We are able to purchase the property from the Cook family. It's now known as the Cook Conservation Lands. Here's another angle of it. This is an interesting uh, piece right here. This is the sheep's walk underneath. This is a, a narrows of where the water comes through where the old mill works were up there. And it's an underwater coffer dam that when they wanted to work on the mills, you could drop the water and it became a coffer dam which they could then add to and they could work on the mills um, when they were dry. We actually used this during the process so it was um, not the typical sheathing that you saw driven in for a coffer dam to work on them. There's some of the work. So here's actually the dam coming to shape. You can see that we replaced the uh, cedar posts with a concrete spine Yes, all over a weekend. The company Rocco Construction out of um, Providence, Rhode Island was very good with concrete. We found out like with most municipal projects when you go through the process they're really good at one thing but not good at other things. If you're now looking at down towards Lower Shawn. So because the um, angle, the steep um, height of the dam is so high, instead of going with the typical concrete weirs, we decided, if I didn't set something up, decided to go with a um, steep, uh, Alaskan steep passage, uh, which we found out that the contractor was not very good at putting together. So that took a couple of tries. This was uh, purchased through a $75,000 NOAA grant, and there it is installed in the new flume and the bridge being built over it. So there's another control structure up there as well. Here is the fish counter that we put up that has been lent to us through uh, Division of Marine Fisheries. We have the fish counter at the upper, upper run and um, volunteer counters at the lower run. This is a m modest run. We have an estimated five to 8,000 fish per year that we've counted since 2008. Prior to that, the data is kind of iffy, as you all know. Um, a lot of the data that um, was prior to, you know, to the 2000s was just anecdotal. I can tell you regalia stories when I was 10 years old fishing down here for pickerel that there were hundreds of thousands of fish and you could walk on them. But uh, there were no real accurate records. So now we have what we believe to be accurate records and it's been five to 8,000 for both ponds since 2008, which is when this was completed. There's another picture of it, and here it's starting to take shape, and when you go up there, you'll see the vegetation that's growing on it. Here's the bridge to go across that we're going to put the boards from the original cedar posts. Here it is with the flowers in bloom on the sides. 
And that's what it looks like when the wildflowers are out. Okay? So, um, what I'd like you to take away from this is there are multiple funding sources that you can use. You need to get your town on board for these things. Um, I'm, it's very easy for me because with all my appointments, I'm also the um, staff person for the Community Preservation Committee. So we work hand in hand. Um, if anybody would like more information on how we funded these projects, uh, I have plenty of cards here that you can contact me. So, questions? I'm sorry. How did your visual counts compare to the electronic counts? They, they were actually pretty close. Yes. The total cost of the project at the upper run was $1.5 million. The total cost of this was oh, just over $1 million. That's, that's the entire dam, including everything. 